why can it be so hard to actually sit down and start drawing? We don't have to do it. We're trying to do it because we want to. So why is it such a problem then? Wasting time just messing around and not getting down to it can be so frustrating. Let me share 10 points that I think can help anyone settle down and start to draw when procrastinating is a problem. And they fall into two main areas. The first to actually make it as easy to start as possible. And the second area to make the experience as pleasurable and as encouraging to want to do it again as possible. And can I say, don't underestimate the 10th point. It's not one that I've ever mentioned in a video before, but I really believe it draws everything else together and sets us up for success. If I can understand why it's so hard to sit down, what's actually the block, what's holding me back? Well, that can be very helpful if it's something I can then work through. But if not, we don't need to understand the why to be able to deal with it effectively through these 10 points. The first one is don't fall into the trap of thinking I need to wait till I feel like drawing. Part of the problem with whatever dynamic is stopping us from actually starting is that it stops us feeling like we want to or we can draw right now. So I have to disconnect my drawing time from how I feel. When I was learning, say, mathematics at school, I didn't go to maths when I felt like it. I went to the lessons that were scheduled regardless of how I felt. So for my drawing or any art, I need to set my practice times and I need to stick with them. They're not negotiable. And when I'm in the drawing session, I actually have to draw. Watching drawing videos, looking at other people's drawings, looking at my past drawings, none of these things are acceptable use of my drawing practice time. I have to actually be drawing. The next point is when I plan these regular timetable drawing sessions, make them shorter rather than longer. Now it needs to be a long enough period so that I, for however I draw, can do a productive drawing. And it also has to be a time that's achievable for my other schedules that I can do it regularly. So whether it's 15 minutes or 60 minutes, I need to be realistic because I'm trying to set myself up for success. And if I plan a session that's just not practical, then I'm not going to get that. And also a shorter drawing session is going to feel less challenging, less daunting. It's going to be easier to think, oh, I can do it. But it also means it's important that we use all the time productively actually drawing. And because our drawing sessions are now shorter, try aiming at scheduling just one or two more per week than you think you can manage. If you've only been drawing once a week, then try having two sessions. If you're having a couple of sessions a week, try doing three sessions. Just push yourself a little bit more because part of what we want to see is improvement and shorter sessions, but more of them closer together is a very important learning strategy with any skill. The closer we are to the last time we engaged with this skill learning, the more easily we build on what we've just done and therefore achieve more in that session, even if it's not a particularly long session. Because in some ways our mind is still connected with what we did, what we learned, helpful or unhelpful in the last session. And we're using that to help guide what we do before we even start. So push the number of sessions just slightly, just by one to what perhaps we think we would have done. This next point is put some thought where you do your drawing practice. Don't just sit down at the kitchen table because that's where you've always done it. What is a place, what's a location where you have some privacy, some freedom from distraction of noise or other people wandering in to see what you're doing? And be creative, possibly home, depending on the stage of family life, who you live with, what the people in the apartments around you are like may not be a good option for this. Why not consider stopping off at a local library on the way home for a 30 minute drawing session before you even get home? Perhaps there's a local group of people who get together and draw in a senior citizen center or something. And you could join them for one of your drawing sessions. 
depending how much space you need for how you draw what you use it may actually be the room in the house which is more of a storage room that no one ever goes into that will work or a back deck or porch or front porch area be creative don't just use if you like the obvious spot if it doesn't let you be undisturbed and keep your concentration this next one again makes sense if we're having more frequent sessions that are relatively short but that's be ready to start as soon as we sit down if we have 30 minutes of drawing we can't start that trying to work out what we'll draw we can't start that trying to work out what pens still have ink in them what markers still have ink in them sharpening our pencils trying to find our ruler whatever we have to be able to sit down and actually start whatever we've already chosen to do so we need to choose the other things at other times and it's probably going to be far more effective to choose say photos to use as references in a way where we might find three four five six in one go print them all off in one go have them ready to go and even work out the order get some sort of progression as well as courses making sure that I've got the materials that my drawing pad doesn't suddenly have the last sheet used up the session before and I don't have time to get to the art shop I don't want excuses to procrastinate and with a smaller session I want to be able to start straight away so having made it as easy as possible for us to start we need to just start and discover that we can survive more than just survive we can have fun in the process so now let's look at some ways we can actually make the time we spend drawing more productive and more enjoyable because that is also going to help us overcome the procrastination when we start to have good memory after encouraging memory built up of our drawing sessions we will feel less reason to hesitate now this next one might be a bit controversial but that's don't use an eraser regardless of what you're drawing with whether it's a pencil or whether it's a pencil under drawing with ink if you're drawing with ink there's no option but don't use an eraser it's not a productive way I don't think to use a relatively short time and it's actually not a productive way I don't believe to learn to draw particularly if we have procrastination issues because often they're linked to a fear of making mistakes to a fear of our drawing not working out to a fear of somehow proving to ourselves that we can't do it and drawing lines that we erase that we redraw that we erase that we redraw can build into a cycle of being more and more demanding to get it exactly right and it becomes more and more frustrating when we can't seem to manage it and instead of the drawing process being this smooth flow that's relatively enjoyable we get stuck on this very unsatisfying very frustrating stage of repeat 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 and building the feeling that we can't do it instead of moving on to other parts of the drawing that can give us far more satisfaction part of the reason I switched to drawing freehand in ink was to force myself to break out of this erase 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 loop that was becoming more and more strangling of my drawing pleasure and what I've learned firstly is that mistakes never look as bad at the end in fact if I've got the line that I'm not happy with there when I now go to redraw the correct line which we should always do because we're learning we're doing drawing exercises when I draw the correct line it's much easier to get that next line in exactly the right place because I can position it referencing the one that I know is too high too low too long whatever but even more importantly I learned that most of the time what seemed to be such a terrible mistake that I wanted to get rid of it by the end of the drawing isn't even noticeable that either with the correct lines around it or just the rest of the drawing in place it's not nearly as noticeable it doesn't scream out the way it did when it was one of the few lines on the paper and it's usually in the first lines that we're more likely to put a line where we think oh no that's no good in fact often I find that I can completely hide the line with shading or just slightly repositioning some other object in my scene a really underestimated and undervalued aspect of drawing is that when we draw from start to finish we develop a tempo a rhythm certain parts certain stages of the drawing process 
have their own speed and their own process and progress. And when I get stuck in a, that's no good, frustration, erase, redo, still no good, more frustration, erase, loop, I interrupt that rhythm. And in fact, I undercut that rhythm from being re-established properly again. So when I, in effect, push through, go just simply go past that line that worries me so much right now, I learn that it's not such a big deal. I learn that it's not such a big deal for my drawing. So I learn technique, I learn drawing process, and that's why I'm drawing, to learn a skill. But in my mind, I also learn a better, healthier way of thinking. And if I have procrastination issues, then clearly I need to improve my way of thinking regarding the whole drawing process. So let me encourage you to give it a try if you never have. Another important tip, finish a drawing in the one session. Again, if I think back to say school and doing maths lessons, to learn maths concepts, I wouldn't think it was a good idea to get halfway through a complex problem and then think, Oh, I'll finish this next time. Because what I'll probably find is that next time I've lost the momentum, the understanding, the warming up of my mind and all the things that got me halfway through. And if we think back to my point at the end of the last point about trying to finish a drawing in one session, it's exactly the same with drawing. It's no less a problem in many ways and a process to go through than solving a maths problem. My finished drawing is the solution. And if I stop halfway through and come back a week later, I've let go of a lot of what I was holding on to to get to that point. And I might never get back into that place. But at the very least, the not so much warming up, but the development of my drawing process that happens in the natural course of an entire drawing has been stopped. And so now I'm going to be having hesitant, cold marks right at the point where if I'd drawn in one session, I would have been very warmed up with nice confident marks and starting to pull the whole scene together, starting to do the second half of the drawing techniques and activities. And even though I'm doing the second half of the drawing, if it's actually at the start of my drawing session that I'm doing it, I am not going to be in the right place in my mind and in my hand to be able to do it well. And we're trying to set ourselves up to create drawings that in some way at least, if not many ways, we're happy with. Next point, if I'm trying to set myself up for a satisfactory, a satisfying end, and if I'm wanting to finish a drawing in one session, then I need to be realistic about what I attempt. I need to find scenes that in some way I can draw effectively whether it's 15 minutes or 60 minutes that I'm giving myself. And that with the level of complexity, I have a chance of doing it well. I don't want to be tackling three or four new challenges in the one scene, pushing myself into new directions slowly, consolidating, and then another new direction is a far more effective learning strategy. Another point I don't think I've ever mentioned before is to do since we've got now regular sessions set up and since we're planning in advance what we're doing and hopefully not just planning the next session but the next few sessions and that's to do a series of related drawings. Now to do that I need to find a series of related references before I start the first drawing session so that I know that I've got them. Now, it may be that I do a similar subject over and over again. Maybe it's a series of cars, maybe it's a series of portraits, maybe it's a series of street scenes, but where, for whichever, I start with a simpler subject, simpler technical challenges, and finish up after three, four, five, six sessions with a more challenging one. This also gives me time to research any skills that I might want to be pushing myself in, such as, say, hatching. If my fifth sixth drawing has more complex structures to be hatched in, then I've got time to look up and see what other people are doing. And maybe I can adopt some of their techniques in my drawing. And my final point flows on from that last point. And this is the one that I don't think I've ever mentioned before also. And that's to plan a series of lessons ahead, not just choosing a series of photos, but actually have an intention with what I'm hoping to accomplish with what I'm trying to do. This is really me saying, well, if I'm self-taught, if I'm not doing a course, I'm the teacher, I need to plan the lessons. Not just plan what I draw, but plan what I'm trying to achieve from that drawing so that I can consciously 
build on skills so that I can do any lesson prep that I need to do. That I can find artists who are already successful in techniques that I would like to try incorporated into my own creative thinking and output. And besides this, obviously being a very effective way to get the most from our drawing time because classes are not a series of one-offs. They're meant to build and flow if we're learning a skill to take us deeper into that skill, to give us more and more understanding that actually gives us a stronger and stronger foundation to build on with the new things so that we end up building faster and faster and faster, the larger, the stronger the base of what we already know and can accomplish is. And because we have more direction now, it actually makes our preparation for the next session faster and easier. Because in a way, we've started our next session as soon as we start thinking about what we want to achieve. So when I actually start to draw, however I do that, I'm already in the process. I'm already in some way in the groove. I've perhaps looked at things to inspire me. I've looked at things to learn from. I've looked at my old drawings to weigh how I can improve them. But I've been able to position myself to start further ahead. Therefore, to get a better result, and that is always going to make our drawing process more enjoyable. So if we can start to replace the frustrating negative experiences we can have or fear we're going to have of drawing with making it really easy to collect really positive experiences of drawing, then that will certainly help us stop procrastinating and not just put off starting to draw, but actually look forward to it and maybe even pushing ourselves to finding additional time because it's such a positive contribution to my life and well-being. G'day, Stephen Travers. Hope this was helpful. Hope it helps you start. Turn it off, go and do a drawing and put some of these things into practice, perhaps the ones that you think most obviously will help make a difference to your being able to sit down and draw. But look, in the end, whatever you draw, however you draw it, however you organize your drawing, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.